Top of the morning. Uh, so we have, we have one, we have one, yeah. one family friend who's Irish, but it's really just the Icelandic accent. <laughs> no. It's pretty crazy sometimes. Good morning, I just got back from the supermarket and I'm back in the ceramic studio where I, <laughs> this is like my filming spot, I guess. As always to start the vlog, let me read to you some affirmations I wrote this morning that I think could also resonate with you. If you agree with them, repeat them after me. I am constantly evolving. Life is fun for me. I am fearless and full of soul. I love that one. I am so grateful to be living my dream life. And if you hear that and you're like, well, I'm not living my dream life, Shana. <laughs> Remember that your dream life, if you can imagine it, it already exists on another plane of reality. I read this quote and it's like, people see like positivity as being like this very frivolous thing um, and like this unrealistic thing, whereas like negativity is more like rooted in realism. And I think that's super interesting, like how we always root negativity um, or like very small thinking as like the reality when in actual actuality being connected to the truth of the universe and the truth of reality is that you know that there that anything is possible and there's so much more possible than like just this very like earthly way of thinking and I think that a lot of people won't admit it, but success is scary to them because it means that like they actually have to put themselves out there in the world, you know what I mean? Um, and I think it's a journey getting to this point where you're like, I'm not afraid of my full potential. Like this is an affirmation I fucking love as well, which is I'm not afraid of my full potential. I'm not afraid of my full potential. But anyway, I went to the store today because so actually here we go to the store once a week like we all chip in for gas and we go to this big supermarket um, we're not going again until like friday and i ran out of chocolate <laughs> and i have like such a sweet tooth so i went to the little store that they have here um but it's so small like, they have such a small selection of things and also i feel like I'm, con I'm consuming less because i'm having to think about my meals ahead of time but yeah anyway like they have some really interesting snacks here like fish jerky like beef jerky but for fish um i really hate fish so i'm not even gonna try it but i might try some snacks or something like that but yeah since the last Video I actually ended the last video sitting in this very exact spot and then as I was leaving I ran into the guy who's running this place and um, the day before we had went to the Lunga festival and It's like a performance art festival and they have music and it's like a really big deal in Iceland and we just went as like spectators um but he had this idea for us to go and do a performance he's a musician and um he knows that I'm like a performance artist. So we thought of like this idea. He has like this organ he wanted to burn and just like go there and make something, you know? Sort of like spur of the moment. And he hyped me up and I was like, yeah, let's go fucking do it. All right, we are doing an impromptu performance. We're driving two hours to the Lunga Festival and we're gonna do a musical performance. I'm gonna do like some crazy spoken word. Not planned. <laughs> Yeah. 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 It's gonna yeah. be sick. It's gonna be sick. All right. It's gonna be fucking lit. <laughs> it's gonna be fucking lit. Okay, Pauline. Yeah. Qu'est-ce que tu vas faire pour la perf? Je vais danser. <gasps> Je vais faire une improvisation. Et comment tu le sens? 
T'es nerveuse T'es contente Je suis un peu nerveuse. Ah <rire> Mais tu vas tout déchirer. J'ai pas le choix. <rire> um, I went back to my place and I wrote down like some texts, wrote some texts in the car. Um, <laughs> and we went to Lunga, which is uh, where the festival was again. And um, we like were walking around town and we found like this really cool like boat bar and we moved the piano upstairs. So the lady that owns this boat restaurant is gonna let us do a concert up here. Performance. The name of our group is Fit Bitch. Okay. Watch out with the smoke machine because the cover is loose. Okay. Oh my god. Moving this piano up there. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Okay, so like all of Iceland's pop stars are at this fucking party and I have to do the vocals for the shit. What? I've decided I'm gonna. I'm gonna just like speak affirmations to them. Oh my god. You just found out that the sky is falling. I actually performed and I <laughs> it was so fucking ridiculous. I was like, kings and queens of Iceland, are you ready tonight? You can follow your dreams. If you believe in what I'm saying, repeat after me. <laughs> it was such a good vibe and I had them like turn towards each other, like the people in the audience, and um, give each other hugs and tell each other that they're beautiful. And I could sort of like see the audience lighting up a bit, you know what I mean? And it definitely gave me some ideas about like, when I have my own shows and things, what I would like to do and how, you know, obviously like when you're doing music and stuff, you're performing your stuff that you've created. But also I think that there's a lot of ways that you can make people like a part of the experience. Like I've been to so many shows where it's just like someone with like a microphone and it just is such like an ego thing. So it was actually really fucking fun and I felt like very comfortable up there and just like, I don't know, like I felt like I could put on some sort of alter ego. But yeah, I wanted to talk about that because it was such a spur of the moment decision to go to this festival and make a performance and I feel like a lot of times um, as artists, like we don't let ourselves fail. It always has to be like something so thought of ahead of time and so planned out. We're so attached to what we create defining us that I think that we limit ourselves in a lot of way, ways. And I think that it was really freeing to just go there with like this sort of idea in head, in our head and just be like, we're just going to try something and see what happens. You know what I mean? And sure, it probably wasn't like the best performance ever, but there was also something like really raw and cool about it. Like I was like, standing up and like screaming and just like yeah i just felt like very much like we wanted to go there and have this experience and so it just reminded me that the reason why we create in the first place is to connect to people i think that really truly if we let go of the ego and we allow ourselves to just try things um and separate ourselves from what we create then we're able to make so many things and to be so free as artists and i was talking about this on my instagram and it's really something that resonates with me as far as like music goes because you know i think for a long time like i had this idea of being a musician is something that like in order to share you have to be like super good and you have had to have like perfected what you're doing when in reality like life is so short and you're allowed to put something out there that was like your best effort you know what i mean and so i had all of these plans coming here of like things that were gonna that i was gonna work on but actually i've had such like a surprising revelation as far as like music goes and performing that has been so freeing that i've just been moving more and more towards music like i've been teaching myself the electric guitar and i've just been like playing around with like my stage presence and stuff and so i just wanted to share that with you guys to continue to encourage you as well um, to just start doing shit, you know what I mean? Like even if you feel like right now, maybe like you're drawing or maybe you're, you know, wanting to get into painting or whatever and there's like this little voice inside your head telling you that it's too late, just remember that your best effort today is enough. Like it's okay to, you know, make a shitty illustration and share it, like these things aren't who you are 
and I wrote this like long text about this on my Instagram as well about how just like what you had for breakfast two weeks ago is long forgotten so are the things that you try as an artist and that aren't like amazing you know what I mean and that's been such a gift here to realize and yeah what else can I tell you guys so I've been out in nature trying to be out in nature every day and like soaking up that good energy I've been journaling every day I think this afternoon I'm going to go like there's such little to do in this village which is both a blessing and like okay what am I gonna do today um after I'm like done working um, but they ha one thing that they do have in this city, in this village, is a rock museum. So there was this lady that lived here and in the course of her lifetime, she collected over a hundred thousand rocks and like very beautiful and rare rocks. Rocks and it's the biggest rock collection in all of Europe. And it's in this little village. I don't know, it's like 10 bucks to get in. When I was younger, I used to collect rocks. Um, I had like a whole rock collection. And I just think it's really beautiful that she devoted her life to go hiking and just picking up these rocks, like these very beautiful and rare rocks. Um, because I don't know that many people that do devote their life to one thing, like collecting or have like such a passion for something. And I think it's very poetic. And even like in her 80s, she would walk up the mountains with her grandkids and they would just like collect rocks together so i thought i would go and maybe i would take you guys with me um and yeah i thought that i would be like doing more like studio vlogs like filming myself working but really i've been working on like the end stuff for my book and then just like music stuff which i have shared like in my other vlogs um i wanted to interview some of the artists but uh, i think i said this in my other video some of them got covid and stuff so um yeah it's been like more quiet around here which is totally fine um but yeah, let's go see the rock collection. This is the tiny, tiny little store. They just have like, if you need milk or Ran of eggs or something like that. <laughs> so when I first got here, I tried to walk up to the church. But it's like on this like hilly mountain, as you can see, and I couldn't get back down. <laughs> the inaccessible church. One coffee shop <laughs> that opens at 4 p.m. every day. Another thing I noticed is everyone has a hot tub. <laughs> I used to have my first ever car I ever ever got it was an old Volvo, the same kind, only it was white and I named it Hank. <laughs> Hank has come back! <laughs> I love the color, oh my god, cute. And there's a lot of abandoned buildings because I guess, you know, like in little villages, you can't, it's harder to find work, so, you know, people end up having to leave to go to the city. Um, so yeah, actually there's one girl here in her project, her whole project is driving around and finding these abandoned um, houses, and they can be like really beautiful houses. Um, and she takes photos of them and screen prints them. Um, so yeah, her work's really interesting. There she is.
this one's really cool. It's just like, what a weird shape, you know? Petra always had a keen interest in rocks and minerals. When Petra began collecting stones, many people kindly told her that her time would be better spent baking or doing other jobs that were thought to be more fitting for a housewife. But Petra took no notice of that and never tried to suppress her life's calling for collecting things. Instead, she packed lunch for herself and her children and headed to the mountains searching for stones and teaching the children how to get along with nature. sort of like feel like crying in a way like this woman devoted her whole life to walking up the mountain and picking stones and it was such like a simple thing but it just brought her so much pleasure and she just took the time you know to look for these things and I don't know there's something just like very poetic about it and the gardens are so gorgeous like the energy here is like crazy. I was having sort of like a rough morning, just like a few things not going as planned in my work and things, but this just like totally, I just feel so recharged. <laughs> like, whoa, this is like a major high from these stones. This was her favorite stone. In this impressive museum, it is difficult to argue that one stone is more beautiful or more special than the next. That doesn't change the fact that this particular stone is Petra's favorite one. The reason is not that she considers it to be more pretty than many of her other stones. Its value and beauty lies in the manner it was found, the companionship of the children, and the excitement of bringing it safely to her home. Oh, y'all know I'm going into that gift shop and getting a rock. You already know. <laughs> we get to take a rock home. We have to buy it, but I'm gonna buy a rock um, to remember the experience, but also because I wanna take the energy here with me, a piece of the energy. Um, but I don't know which one to pick, so I'm gonna close my eyes and I'm gonna ask my angels to tell me which rock I should pick. And this is the rock that's gonna bring me like the best energy, so. Oh no, <laughs> not this one. Oh no, <laughs> it looks like a piece of shit. <laughs> Actually, you know what? I think my angels meant to say I think my angels meant to say this one is what they meant. Right? <laughs> oh my god, do I really have to get this? 
<laughs> they would. They have a good sense of humor. Those angels. Fuck me. I don't want that one. I want, I want one that looks like You know, sometimes you have to take destiny in your own hands. I just left the Rock Museum and I wanted to walk over to the cemetery really quick and show you guys. It's the smallest cemetery I've ever seen and I just stumbled upon it the other day. And there's maybe like, I don't know, 20 people in here and the dates go back to like the 1800s or even earlier. I was reading like the names on the gravestones because they have like such obviously like Icelandic names. And then I just felt like called all of a sudden to start singing. And I made up some songs and I started performing some of my music. Um, they seemed to like it. I didn't hear any like complaints. And also I feel like oftentimes the sentiment is when you go to visit a cemetery, it's like sad and people are crying. And so I don't know. Obviously like when we die, our soul leaves our body. Um, but if there is anything lingering here, I wanted them yeah, to hear some songs. And I felt like them saying thank you to me, but maybe that was just me. <laughs> me saying thank you to me. I'm here for some concerts in cemeteries, you know? Anyway. I'm somebody that really likes spending time in, in cemeteries. It doesn't make me sad. It makes me think about how, um, yeah, like how fleeting life is and how important it is to keep reinventing yourself and following what gives you joy and not just going with who you were in one season of your life. Um, and it's also beautiful to see that like all, when you look at like gravestones around the world, it's even though we're in different countries, like it's always like these little notes of love from friends and family and yeah. Anyway, so the rock museum, a lot to unpack, a lot to unpack. I didn't realize this, but it's not a museum. It's her home. I didn't realize that until I was like um, walking around like the inside part and I was like, is this a house? It's like a literal house. And I guess I was reading on like the plaques about her life and um, she started collecting rocks when she was really younger because that's sort of like how she amused herself. You know, she grew up in this little village right here. Um, and then she married someone from this village and when he, and they would like collect rocks together and then when he passed away, she decided that she would open up her home to visitors so that everyone could enjoy the things that she collected. And obviously it was so beautiful to see the rocks, but really what it kind of confirmed to me and what I'm learning more and more as I grow up is it's not really the objects themselves, but it's the stories behind the objects. It's the story behind the thing that you create, you know? I just think it's so important to take the time whenever we create something to ask ourselves, what is the story behind it? What are we trying to share? Because storytelling is really how we connect to others, you know? Um, and that's why I think it's so important as well, like in my videos, like I'll take you to see beautiful things, but then I always like to sit down and connect and try to like think about what it is, you know, what does it mean, you know, because otherwise life doesn't have much value without stories, you know, that's how we connect, that's how we share this human experience of being, look at how like deep I get next to the cemetery, like, <laughs> you guys will get what I mean. There's so many beautiful places in the world, but what do those places mean to you, you know? And so I'm really trying to hear, not just, you know, connect to the beauty of the mountains and this and that, but really try to figure out who I am here and what value does this place give to my spirit and how can I connect to it spiritually, emotionally, etc. Yeah, anyway, do you guys wanna see the rock that I ended up getting? I got this one. I feel like I had to get one because 
just like to have in my pocket and to remind myself that I'm never alone because my angels are always watching out for me and also to reconnect myself to the energy that I felt in there of storytelling um, because like I said rocks were fucking gorgeous of course shout out to you Petra which actually means rock as well which is so funny that her parents named her that and then it just ended up anyway um, but to give soul to things you know what I mean and the way that we do give soul to things is stories to remind myself to create stories and to create magic around my life and I think that that's a beautiful message to take away from today. It's a beautiful message to take away from this video. What story are you trying to create around yourself, around your life, around your experiences, around this season of your life? And are you taking the time to really, to really do that? Anyway, <laughs> if you made it to the end, leave me a comment um, with what you would call this season of your life, you know? What would you call this season of your life? Maybe I would call mine like crystal, crystal baddie. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> that actually like a really cool stage name, like crystal baddie. And it's like just this like recording artist who collects like a bunch of rocks in nature. And then she goes on the, on stage with like all her rocks. And she's like, I'm the crystal baddie, bitch. I'm the crystal baddie. Anyway, never mind. Yeah, crystal baddie. That's uh, me. Um, leave me a comment with your, the name of the season of your life and also crystal baddie. And yeah, I love you guys so much. I'm going to end the video here. Um... What a peaceful day we just shared together. I'm gonna walk back. Um, I'm gonna do some artwork today. Oh, I just felt a raindrop on my head. And I love you guys so much. I'm so grateful to have you in my life, to my friends. And yeah, if you want more content from me, you can subscribe to my Patreon. I have a podcast episode um, that I do there every month. We have Zoom parties. Um, etc or if you just want to support what i'm doing you can do so on there i also have art prints out i have these art prints and on the back of them i often time write i oftentimes write messages and it's because like i said about storytelling i really find that um communicating and giving words to like a painting or like telling the story about it um just gives it so much more value to you, the people who buy it, because you can really just like feel the energy from the painting and what I was going through during that time. Um, and yeah, I definitely think like one of the things that I learned here is I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep like integrating words and communication um, into my artwork, whether it's paintings or spoken word or my music. I'm going to be like very outspoken. So yeah, I have that. And I also have a poetry book if you guys are interested um, in poetry. So, yeah. I love you and I'll see you in the next episode of the Iceland Diaries. <laughs> Bye. Obsessed. It looks like this car just like sprouted out of the ground. <laughs> Oh my god, hilarious. I just have to come back really quick to tell you that my angels have the funniest sense of humor. Because you know how I didn't pick their first choice because I thought that the rocks looked like poop? So I picked their third choice. But I crossed on my way walking back, um, my roommate here, and I asked her if she wanted to hold my rock. And as I was giving it to her, it fell. Like as we were like passing it to each other. And it shattered. <laughs> So now it's like this small, but actually it's okay because I gave a piece to her and I'm going to give another piece to my other roommate. But I'm like, you fucking angels. You think you're so funny, huh? <laughs> anyway, we forget sometimes that our spiritual ancestors, God, everybody has a sense of humor. I like to think that they're a reflection of our own sense of humor. And... I thought it was pretty fucking funny, so, haha. -ha. <laughs> okay, <sighs> bye.
Yeah.